Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 27th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Got an interesting new Wi-Fi vulnerability to talk about. This is a vulnerability that's hardware specific. It's inherent to Broadcom and Cypress chipsets, and it does weaken WPA2 encryption. It's currently being tracked as Crook or CVE 2019-15126. Now, what's happening here is that if you are losing the connection to a wireless access point, then of course the encryption kind of is being reset but what happens in these chipsets is that there's if there's still data left over in the buffer of the chipset that data is being sent with an all zero encryption key which of course makes it trivial to decrypt the data so in essence it does not reveal your wi-fi passphrase it does not break anything else you're doing like tls or the like but yes an attacker in particular if the attacker can trigger the disconnect uh, then the attacker will be able to essentially get a few packets here and there usually a few kilobytes of data now this particular chipset is quite common and uh, in the news release they mentioned for example apple products uh, like it amazon raspberry pi 3 likes it uh, Samsung also in its galaxy models and Google Nexus phones all of uh, these devices use vulnerable chipsets Patches are available for this vulnerability. Apple, for example, already released patches in its Raisin update to its devices. Other devices have done so as well. So make sure that your wireless firmware is up to date. It can be sometimes a little bit tricky for some of the Linux-ish devices, but you should actually be getting firmware updates. They're also as part of your standard Linux update procedures. Of course, you're most vulnerable uh, to this attack if you are sort of in a public place, uh, like, for example, here uh, this week at the RSA uh, conference. In particular, if you appear to be disconnected a lot, this may be an indication that uh, you are being attacked here, or it could just be a bad network, which, of course, is also quite common in scenarios like this. Of course, if you don't trust Wi-Fi networks, one possible option is to tether to your phone and use an LTE or 4G network. Well, uh, those networks may not be as secure as we thought based on some work that was published by researchers from Royal University Bochum and New York University Abu Dhabi. Uh, the attack they're calling impact or impersonation attack in 4G networks relies on exploiting a weakness in the authentication protocol that doesn't really check the integrity of the data. So an attacker could, with a man in the middle position between the legitimate user and the cell tower, inject additional data in the connection that the cell tower then believes is actually authentic data from the end user. So this does not necessarily allow an attacker to read data that's being transmitted just to inject additional data. From a criminal's point of view, this could, for example, be used to sign up for pay services. This would be one potential exploit. But of course, just being able to inject data may also allow an attacker to detect some of the data being transmitted. Now, in order for this attack to work, there also has to be an IP protocol that reflects data. Of course, pings are sort of the obvious way how this could be accomplished. iOS, interestingly, does not necessarily respond to pings on LTE for IPv4 at least. So uh, here, iOS and IPv4 may actually not be vulnerable. Android is vulnerable for IPv4 and IPv6. iOS only for IPv6, according to these researchers. Another attack method they're sort of suggesting here is also if I can inject data, I may be able to, for example, inject uh, HTTP redirects and redirect a user to a malicious website using this vulnerability. 
And probably at least once a week, I keep talking about how you should never expose these admin interfaces to the open internet. Well, another reason Cycel just fixed a vulnerability in its NAS devices and actually a number of other devices, not just NAS devices by Cycel due to a remote code execution vulnerability in the login page. So no authentication required here. And it appears that this particular login logic is used by a fairly diverse set of Cycel devices. So better check for any updates and also make sure that these admin pages are not exposed to the open internet. Well, that's it for today. And of course, today on Thursday, two RSA sessions I'll be participating in. The mobile authentication session has been sold out. So no seats here, but I will release the code and some of the slides and such probably next week, just after doing some cleanup uh, with feedback we'll hopefully get tomorrow. And then in the afternoon, we'll have our annual top threats panel. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you should also be able to view that remotely. And typically it's actually being offered via YouTube and such uh, next day or so after uh, we conduct that panel. So hope to see some of you there. I left some in you know, Storm Center stickers at the Sands booth and also carry some with me. So if you see me roaming to halls, just uh, stop me and uh, I'll uh, give you some stickers. That's it. And thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.